This is not serious, but important for at least half of the world. <laughs> I saw the other day where the sales of structured bras is declining. <laughs> and <laughs> it's because we're all home and don't need to um, be uplifting or pushing out or uh, padding or flattening, you know, because if you, if you do your zoom right, freedom. But that did make me uh, go online, of course, and shop because there are these soft bras, soft bras, no wires, no clips, just soft. I went crazy. I got a green one. I got a red one. I got an Adobe Rose. I got a Mochaccino. I got Navy. Never had a Navy bra. So, what seems to be happening is that when I put these on, <laughs> I can't keep them to myself. I run out and show my husband. <laughs> He's like, yeah, great, honey, I'm glad you're happy. Marriage is weird. It is great to have somebody who just accepts whatever it is, you know, rather than what is wrong with you? You know, it's like, great, glad you're happy. Yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of where we are. Dementia setting in, go for it, honey. <laughs> we were listening, I think it was Alan Watts. Is this a uh, very proper British philosopher in the 60s who had studied Buddhism and was sort of translating it for the Western world. Uh, and he's so, so articulate. So, we, so we're just listening to these recordings that somebody happened to take of him. And uh, he was talking about how the world, the planet, the earth, nature is a game being a tree, going from an acorn to a tree and then back to a seed and then starting again. The point of it is the process itself. It's a game. Can, you know, can we play this game? Being, you know, growing up and being a human, it's a game. Being in a social structure, it's a game. It is its own point. And it's not serious. So when you, when you can, when I can, let me not speechify, but let me say when I can take on, I love taking on this perspective, that it's a game. You can, you can play. Play, not suffer and fret. I mean, we do that anyway, but we have a little more choice over it if we can try on this idea that this is a game. And how do I want to play? Who do I want to be as I play? What do I want to feel as I play it? And I think for me, raised as a, my parents grew up in the depression. That was not a game for anybody who lived through it. And so they really raised their children of which I am one, to get a job, be safe, be able to take care of yourself. And basically, you know, that means put, at that time, maybe still, put yourself away. This is not play. This is not fun. This is serious. And so, you know, I bought suits and I 
tried to frown a lot and be serious and I don't it, you know worked. Get up to a point. I wasn't terribly happy. And the places I was happy was where I could play. And it wasn't like this play doesn't mean lazy. It doesn't mean you don't do work. You do, but it's from a different place. It's from a different perspective, frame of mind, uh, motivation. It reminds me too of this book called Finite and Infinite Games. Finite games have a winner or a loser. And infinite games, the point is to keep playing and to include as many people. And there's not an end where a, a winner is declared like they're the best. No, the point is to keep the game going. What I think has made, if I am good at what I do, it's that I bring in play as much as I can. Laughter, ridiculousness, silly, silly. And music and the arts and We've made these false distinctions between aliveness and productivity. Is that true? I think there's been, well, okay, here we go. Like a historical mistrust that the people who work for you will do the work you want them to do. And you realize this all derived from slaves. This is we're driving slaves. That's what the pharaohs had. But slavery existed for 5,000 years, it still exists, but overtly it was a way to go with the economy for 5,000 years. And the attitudes of how you treat your workers has not changed much. You can't trust them, they're lazy. Which is bananas. We are so creative and so wanting to learn and eager and not so hey kids run around the playground that's what we should all be doing all our lives but you know because learning is amazing <laughs> it's amazing there's so much to learn and do and experience and try and then this whole idea that well you know, before I can remember, I wanted to try the flute, and my mom was like, "Well, are you going to stick with it?" It's like I haven't even tried the flute. I don't know. Let me try it. And then if I didn't, I didn't. I want to try the French horn. Are you going to stick with it? I want to try it. <laughs> I I love school. I love school myself. How we do school. You know, there are, there are open schools where you can choose what you learn, go at your own pace, and you are known by the teachers. What? What? I'm known by the teachers? The teachers know me, and they know me emotionally and personally, and help me choose when I'm ready to learn, but I get to choose and do what I'm interested in from a wide variety. One of the main things people do not like is being told what to do. And yet, we keep structuring things. So that's exactly what happens. So I'm not gonna tell you what to do, except have as much fun playing today as you can. <laughs>